Hello everyone. It's a breezy morning here in Dubai, so we might have a bit of background noise. You'll also hear panting of Wolf, my Belgian Malinois and, and assistant producer. He's down here. Um, he may interrupt us, but there he goes. You see, he's always craves for attention. But anyway, let's get going. Welcome to a new series where I give a monthly update on Dubai Coronet, a 44 foot, 16 ton motor yacht built in 1976 by Boltford Boats in Denmark. She's the last of four remaining Coronet Yacht 44s. There are only 14 built and she is on number 14. She's been in Dubai since new and I'm the third owner having owned her since 2000. Is that right, Wolf? The monthly update will comprise where we went with the boat, what work we did on the boat, and I think it's useful to let you know the costs involved because taking on a boat like Coronet is a labour of love. So, here we go. We made three trips in June. Um, summer is now here. The temperatures are up in the 40s. Yeah, we've had 45. We've had, yeah, not 46 yet, but we have had 45 degrees Celsius, and that's all well over 100 Fahrenheit, right? So it's hot. June the 9th was our first trip of the month. We went to the Zainab and Flat, Flat Barge wrecks, around 49 nautical miles in total there and back. The Zainab, as usual, was a, a lovely dive. It's far offshore, so the Viz is better. We found a new site called the Flat Barge. The Viz was horrible, but we were happy to find a new dive site. So you can see some of that footage. June the 19th, second trip of the month, we went to the Nastaran and Abdullah's Wreck, two of our favorite sites. Um, total journey, 32 nautical miles. The viz on both wrecks was terrible. Ended our lucky streak for the last year, year and a bit. We've always had good viz on, on those two wrecks. But you know, it is what it is. But with the poor viz, I did find this beautiful um, pipe fish on Abdullah's wreck, which made the whole dive worthwhile. And the last trip of the month was June 26. We went to Neptune, another favorite site. It's a 40 nautical mile um, round trip. We tried to dive it. When we got there, we got there just on low water and there was a current running because we threw the shot line in and the flow disappeared. I thought it had detached. We threw a second one in it also went under the water, meaning there was a strong current running. We calculated the current um, later on to be around three knots, 2.8 to three knots. And because we didn't have the um, floats for reference, then we had to eyeball it um, for anchoring using the GPS and we just couldn't get hooked. Yeah, by the time the anchor's down, we'd drifted off and then it'd drift on the wreck. I need, I put the shots down so then I can go over the wreck, drop the hook and come back. So we waited and we waited. Three hours later, the floats popped up. So we thought, right, at least now we can get on anchored on the wreck. So we anchored on the wreck. Um, Stevie and Diane, my regular dive buddies, were first down the line. I helped them with their scooters and everything because there was still quite a bit of current and then I followed. As I got down to about 10 meters, they were coming back. I thought, oh no. Yes, they got down to the wreck, just about to go to the wreck and the anchor popped. There was still quite a strong current. So we decided that dive gods were against us that day. We'd had a nice trip out and we had an unexpected visitor, as you'll see right now. A cormorant just came and stayed on the boat for 10 or 15 minutes for a rest, and he wasn't flustered with us at all. So it was still a nice day out, no regrets. So total distance we traveled for June was 122 nautical miles. That also includes going for fuel and doing some training for my apprentice captain, Peter. Because of the temperature June through August, we, we keep the trips fairly short and generally we only go out diving once a week. In the winter, we'll use the boat a lot more. We'll go diving, we'll, we'll go off um, socialising and a lot of the time we'll go on the Dubai Creek and the Dubai Canal in the evening. So let's talk about the work we did on the boat and the costs involved. So first up, we've got the fixed costs. 
I'm going to do a full video on fixed costs. We're still actually really dis deciding what's fixed, what's not. So this is um, a good estimate, but it includes things like um, the mooring, um, the captain's fees, uh, staff fees, um, the Vonix subscription, Wi-Fi, registration fees, a provision for survey, um, fire extinguisher maintenance, because that's an annual contract, pest control, and that comes to around 2,000. $100 plus or minus. I'm, I'm doing all of this in dollars because it's more international for everyone. We're still fine in tuning these, these fixed costs as I said and one, I'll drill into them and then from next month's video the fixed cost will definitely be it. and I'm, as I said I'm going to do a separate video on that very soon. We pay for water and electricity at this dock, it's summer so we run the AC a bit more and that was $45 which I think is quite reasonable. Fuel, $485. But I'm lucky because my friends have come diving with me, all contribute to the fuel. So that netted off to $75. So not bad, really. Maintenance and replacement costs were $1,200 this month. And what do I mean by that? That's when we've done maintenance or we've got to replace things like mooring lines or anchor lines. So first off, we got a hundred yard, it's sold in hundred yard bundles, anchor line, and we've got a replacement mooring line. That cost us um, $220. We did a, um, we sanded back the rubbing straight that goes round the boat. Traditionally we varnish it, but it, it, it always looks rubbish after a few months. So we're now using teak oil. So we sanded all that back. We filled all the cracks, all the screw holes, and then teak, it looks great. Um, that cost around $30 for the teak oil and filler. Um, we do all that work ourselves. That was all done by apprentice captain Peter um, and he made a really good job of it. And water and food expenses during the month on the boat, not for trips, were $25. That's for when people working on the, on the boat, they've got food, water, drinks, something to eat. So the master cabin um, toilet or WC um, the joker valve was replaced again. I'm not sure if we've got the right joker valves because they go every quarter and I really need to drill into that and find out you know, why they should last at least a year. Um, the cost was nothing. We had a, a, a stock of old ones and we installed it ourselves. But it's something I've really got to work on because the, the forward WC hardly ever needs its joker valve changing. We changed the impellers on the engine water pumps. We do that at the start of every su summer, come what may. And that was uh, $125 for two, just for the parts. And again, we installed ourselves. My captain's chair finally gave up the ghost. Here you can see it all in, in pieces. Um, I had renovated and upgraded the base and everything a long time ago and had meant to get on with the main chair. Um, but we kept making quick fixes and all of that. And the time had come for some Brian re-engineering. We've got it all done. If you look now, you don't see it's all done. You just see we've got the, the, the base installed. All the work we did in house. So the base now is a stainless steel plywood composite epoxy coated. We've had the armrest, the backrest and the seat all reupholstered. Um, we've made replace the aluminium arms or supports with stainless steel and that's why it's not 100% completed yet because I decided we'd buff and polish that to make it look nice but you know it's come out it's gonna last forever now uh, the cost of doing that was around $100 that was for the upholstery and the powder coating which we have to send outside so the main supports are stainless steel but the one the other secondary supports we've kept the original aluminium and powder coat them you'll see a picture of that completed next month but I'm, I'm glad we finally got on with that we also changed the engine oil and filters we're about a month late on doing that but we didn't use the boat that much this year and that set us back four hundred and ten dollars for the oil and the filters again we changed it ourselves miscellaneous costs were $290, a bit high this month, because we had to buy a few tools and, and things. We, we, we write the tools off in the month and that we buy them. Now let's look at what I call upgrades. And what I do, I have a budget every year 
to spend on upgrading the boat, doing projects which come outside of the maintenance remit. Um, a big project this year is, is putting a gen set on. And what I do is I allocate $600 a month and, and we spread the cost of all upgrade, upgrade over three years to make the operating cost more realistic. And as you see, we, we spent quite a bit this month. We spent more last month because I purchased a second hand gen set. I will be doing a video on that. I can't remember in dollars what it was exactly, but it was 10,500 dirhams, um, which probably comes to around two and a half thousand dollars. The biggest project this month was installing an ultrasonic anti-fouling system um, to see if we can um, never have to anti-foul the hull and possibly the stern gear again. Um, because it's quite an expensive system, we decided in consultation with the manufacturer just to install two transducers, which cost $950 just for the, the kit. And we will need to install another four transducers in the future if the system works, if the test works. The next video on the boat is us installing that Smart 2 system. We're testing the um, starboard rear quarter to see how effective it is. We're testing it over three months. There'll be a monthly video and if after three months we feel it's working well, we'll install the other transducers. Typically in, in, um, in Dubai in the summer, it's blistering hot and most boats, they shade their boats. And we decided this year, we would come up with a summer shading system that we can use every year. Just makes the boat easier to use. We can sit on the boat in the mornings. It's even nicer when we travel out You'll see here the shades we made this month on the rear deck or the aft deck and that just cost us $120 to do all that work because it was just for cutting and stitching. I had spare shades from a factory which we hadn't used so I just purloined those and had them cut and stitched. Now we're working on, on the fore deck, that's a big job for next month. Um, it's a bit more involved because we've got to um, get the frame fabricated and we've got to put some mounts and support so I'm hoping we get that done next month. I've already purchased the shade for the Ford four deck. Um, I didn't have enough spare stuff for that but it only cost us around a hundred dollars. There's a little bit of stitching required probably. Um, I don't know yet but once we get the frame up we'll have a look and then adjust it as required but we won't have to cut it back much. We also um, this month under upgrades and changed out all the upholstery on the foredeck, um, sun lounge or sun cushions. They were looking a bit shabby. They look really good now, as you can see. And that cost us $250. And if you take that over uh, 36 months, so 10 bucks a month. So yeah, and it looks really nice. Other upgrade costs in, in July, we are still um, working on trying to get the generator running it worked for 60 seconds and then it stopped. So we bought a new fuel pump, we put a new fuel filter, we serviced the injection pump and injector. It's still not, not starting. Um, it's been with the dealer for a couple of weeks. They seem not to be interested in working on it. So we're getting it back and we're sending it to another generator mechanic. So all the work on the generator this month came to 535 US dollars. That included um, ordering a brand new water gas separator to make it silent running and a siphon. So again, that's in the monthly upgrade budget. Um, I will be in future videos looking at what we spent versus budget, but I think we're pretty safe on that. I think we'll hit it this year. Um, and we may have to cut back on upgrades next year if I overshoot it. So once we've got the um, gen set running, then we'll install it. And I've not decided will we do that all ourselves. Probably we will, we'll probably plumb it all in. We've already uh, made provision for the two exhausts, uh, the above water one and below water one. We might get the dealer to commission it, um, or we might just have a go ourselves because the, the dealer hasn't been too great yet. Uh, it's a whisper, second hand whisper power unit that we bought and we thought you know he would have really helped us but not really 
So what else? Ah, we um, at our annual um, fire extinguisher service and inspection, we've got an engine room CO2 system. So that was um, inspected and serviced. That costs um, 235 US dollars, pretty reasonable. And we include that in the monthly fixed cost. So we take that, divide it by 12, put in the fixed costs. Heavy month expense wise this month, our fixed cost, as I mentioned earlier, um, $2,100. Fuel was $75. Water and electricity, $45. Maintenance and replacements came in $1,200. Add in the upgrade budget of $600, and that comes to a total of US dollars 4,020 for this month. So yeah, um, pretty expensive, but she is a 44 foot 16 ton yacht. And to buy a new boat like this today would be hundreds of thousands, if not touching a million dollars. I wish it was worth that. July is going to be a quiet month on the boat front. I'm going to be in the Maldives diving and filming for two weeks. So we'll probably only get a couple of trips in. But while I'm away, we're going to take the um, time to get Peter's training well underway. He's done his 12 meter FTA and DMCA license. This boat's 13.5, so he needs to have a 24 meter license. We can get his DMCA license pretty quickly by doing one course, but we, we need him to have a Federal Transport Authority or FTA license, 24 meter license. That then allows us to travel to all of the Emirates because technically with a Dubai license, you can only sail in Dubai waters. A couple of the Emirates are happy with it. We're worried about a couple of the other Emirates for the longer trip. So that's well underway. He will do his VHF course this month possibly his first aid course if there's time if not we'll move that over to August he needs those to certify as a captain and he's doing his RYA day skipper um, theory as a just like a pre um, pre not prerequisite just to um, help him doing his FTA 24 meter license to make the theory a lot easier who knows they may even accept the RYA theory certificate in lieu of him doing the theory again, but it's just to help him get confidence and pass with higher marks. There is a FTA 24 meter training course, probably scheduled this month if the training institute, we've only got a couple of training institutes for the FTA license, we've got loads for the Dubai license. Um, so if they run the course this month, as I say, I think it's gonna be on the 19th, he'll be on that. So by the end of this month, it'll be a fully certified 24 meter FTA boat skipper, which means he, he can go drive the boat in every Emirate, including Dubai. And it's really good because he's, as I say, he's an apprentice, so he's paid like apprentice wages, but I spend everything that he needs to qualify as a captain. And then on his contract renewal, obviously he's gonna be paid like a full captain. So I bet he's smiling when he sees this video. So really, on the boat front, we've just got four objectives for July and which you know, I'm flying tomorrow night. So, and, and we're, yeah, we're nearly a week in, we're over a week into July already. So if we get this done before the end of the month, I'm really gonna be happy. And the first job is to complete the summer shading project. Let's get the four deck um, supports, mounts fabricated and installed. That should only take us a couple of days max we have to move the boat because we're not allowed to weld in the marina for obvious reasons so we move to Judaf and we have a stainless steel fabricator um, work on that for us he's really quick he does all our stainless steel work so i'm pretty sure we'll knock that off before the end of the month at the same time you'll see now we've got all on all our rails we've got um, tensioning wires and we've got these little eye eyes or eye bolts call them they're screwed in they're horrible they always come loose they annoy me so at the same time we're going to tidy them all up put them all the same size and have them welded in place so then we can tension um, the wires which looks a lot better rather than having them slightly loose so for years i've been meaning to do that so in july we're going to get it done look at this picture this is my wind generator pole what's wrong with it it's not straight, annoys me. 
and I'm not happy with the support. There's, there's, there's no reinforcement on the support. And I always worry if we have a really strong wind, it could just go boom. So we're gonna fix that. So I guess this um, July's fixing the annoyances, right? <laughs> and finally, we wanna get the gen set run, running so we can install it in August. We've done a bit of work already. We've got the base plate done. We've, um, we've got the exhaust outlets done so if we can get that gen set running and it's going somewhere tomorrow to another guy who says he can get it running it's going to be great because it's hot in the summer and if we can run the ac in one cabin it'll just be really nice when we've got a two or three hour or four hour journey back from a dive site just to cool off and that's it for the june report i hope you found this video useful and it helps you understand the costs involved in running an old boat i mean as i mentioned she's 1976 44 foot 16 tons so she's a substantial boat this month was quite heavy expense wise um later this month i'll let you know the average cost monthly cost for the first six months just to give you an idea and as i said earlier we'll look at the fixed um, cost element as well just to really hone it down and, and give you everything that makes it up I may put that in a separate video I may include it in the six monthly video so thanks for watching Wolf's now lying down still panting because I've taken him out for a run I don't run I get him to run um, he's still panting but I hope you enjoyed his participation as well and we'll see you next time